Welcome to Monday Morning Express, and today we have a special in-studio mm -hmm. guest, Mr. Forrest Nace. And uh, Forrest, I see you're wearing a Nace's videography shirt. Tell us, what is that? Yeah, well, thank you, Dan and Roland, for having me on the program here with our uh, guests. And uh, coming to where Alan Keller used to be years ago with his Great Motor World video series, after his retirement, nobody had picked it up, and it's something that I felt was really missing a void there. So what I have done is I have created this new company, Nace's Videography, and we are videoing the finest model railroads out there uh, with all new cameras, new sound effects. It'll be as programmed similar to what he did, uh, but with some new segments as well. So we're excited to bring that to the public. Yeah, and we're looking forward to talking with you a little bit more about that later in the show. Uh, hey, something else for us. Uh, we know that you're the new owner of the Brass Expo. Congratulations yes. again. Thank you. <laughs> and we know it's a lot of work because we personally have done it, but we've got a tease in fact, we've got an announcement that we're going to make but, later today. You know, the beautiful thing about a tease is you have to wait. You're going to make them wait. <laughs> Next week on MME on our season finale, we'll announce the dates and everything for the 2019 Brass Expo. That is correct. And we'll be talking a little later in today's program about the theme of it and what uh, what uh, people can expect that attend. Great. Right. And not only talking about it, but you and Roland are going to go to our Studio B. Yeah, our Studio workshop, B. Right. And you're going to kind of show a little bit about how you can take an older model and bring it up to today's standards. That is yeah. correct. I think that's a sweet spot. One of the sweet spots in brass today is uh, bringing all that technology into the models that are out there at a very competitive cost standpoint from uh, pricing. So our viewers can see there's a lot of good things in store today. Also today, we will finish with uh, Kenichi Matsumoto and Fred on the history of some of the early Japanese brass and we'll talk about some of the best builders of all time. And of course, Dan, we have another in-studio guest He's that's coming. here, uh, Mr. <laughs> James Wright. You might have seen him on YouTube. Uh, many subscribe to his channel, does a nice job. We had him here in studio to see a little bit about what we do and I think you're gonna talk with him yeah. for a few minutes. Yeah, his video of his uh, visit is gonna be out if it's not out already. Yeah. And uh, also today we will be going back into the vault, a very special model near and dear to my heart. And I will tell you why. <laughs> so you gotta stay tuned. Our last vault model sold immediately. Just like that. As soon as the show was over. Yeah. It was a special piece. But this is a special piece too. So, a lot of great things in store today. Thanks for joining us. took us the first time I met Mr. Uh, well, Sofuisan. Sofuisan, yes. Yes, and mm. then his shop huh. was what? Probably 10 feet by 10 feet. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and uh, oh, it was just amazing. Do you not have a, a videotape of Sofuisan working? And mm. uh, he, he they, they, someone set up a video mm. in front of him, of him working. He's working. He falls asleep. He wakes up, goes back to work. <laughs> you have that tape. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Remember yes, that? Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, but he, he worked all the time. Uh, Just that's what yeah, he did. That's what he did. Yeah, mm. yeah. Uh, and his son would bring him food, mm. and it still worked. Uh, <laughs> uh, he, yeah, he showed me that tape. It was funny. Uh, Mr. Sophia also loves uh, uh, sake, sake <laughs> as well as uh, uh, handwork. Mm. Uh, probably uh, last uh, craftsman. Uh, oh, he was. Uh, he was. Uh, he had his mill was made from a singer sewing machine. Wow! Mm. And when he did soldering, he did the old blowtorch mm. way. Wow. By blowing through a glass tube. Mm. That's how he put everything together. Huh. Mm. And his frames, he cut them out by hand. Mm. You know, just what a craftsman. Wow. Yeah. Uh, those craftsmen, uh, this uh, workshop is very small. Uh, I also visit uh, the uh, uh, workshop of uh, Nakayama. Yeah, uh, Nakayama P. shop was uh, called too. Uh, P. P. Him Nakayama. Yeah. Uh, his uh, workshop is uh, behind uh, his uh, 
model shop, yeah. very small model shop with uh, so many plastic uh, ship or aircraft, yeah. and not uh, <laughs> rail roading. Yeah. Um, uh, you like the airplanes? Yeah, mm, you would do just a yeah. model. Yeah. But behind the shop, uh, they uh, had very small uh, workroom. And uh, normally, uh, they uh, may uh, construct uh, uh, toy train like uh, uh, mass production for Katsumi uh, or Endo. And uh, when uh, he could uh, accept, uh, get the order from PFM, uh, he only uh, worked for the handmaids. Right. Uh, but uh, his wife or uh, uh, housewives from nearby uh, always uh, construct uh, uh, start a train set for Katsumi. Mm. But uh, uh, amazing, he cuts uh, by hand for even uh, 30 or 40 pieces, uh, cutting by himself um, and piled. Uh, uh, his skill was also very good. Mm. Uh, probably, I was... Uh, uh, last person uh, seeing mm. them mm. in my uh, 30 years or so, old or so. Mm. Right. Mm. Now, so how long would it take him to produce one of those hand-built models? Uh, Nakayama says uh, uh, one uh, PFM order, he took uh, about uh, six months. Wow. Mm, amazing fast. Mm. So that was for one model, he would take six months? No, no, no. Or for like, like 12, 12 no, or okay. six. Okay. Yes. That, that's right. Mm. And he would yeah. work just all day on that. Mm. Yep. Of course, uh, he uh, got uh, drivers or wheels mm -hmm. or uh, 100 pounds uh, tender uh, truck from mm -hmm. other uh, uh, builders. Mm -hmm. um, right. Mm. Uh, but uh, frame, mainframe, cylinders, uh, boilers, cab, then that uh, he uh, could make by himself, himself <coughs> only. Mm. Uh, Mr. Takeno, uh, uh, Toby, uh, for Toby, uh, also same doing. Mm. And he has a small workshop too? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, mostly a common house, <laughs> common room. <laughs> right. Well, was there not only one supplier for the gearboxes mm. and uh, two people made mm. wheel sets mm. and everybody else shared in okay. that pool? Mm. Right. Yeah. Of course, for us, uh, every brass model is treasures uh, for me, us, but uh, uh, in the future, uh, they will become more treasury <laughs> mm -hmm. because uh, never made again. Uh, in my uh, picture, you can see the uh, Nohoku Western uh, uh, Class J streamline by uh, Toby uh, Takeno. Uh, I always amazed uh, the work for uh, streamline uh, casing mm -hmm, uh, yeah. by hand build and handmade and hand punching the yeah. rivets, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. uh, and and uh, boilers uh, is very uh, glamorous. Um, uh, the curve is uh, very beautiful. Uh, uh, I believe uh, such techniques uh, never come again. Kawaii model was uh, oldest uh, in Japan. They had start uh, uh, maybe 1920s. Oh. Um, and they also had the business for the transportation museum for large uh, static model. Mm -hmm. mm. 
So the skill、uh, was very good for、yeah. hand building.、Uh, so、uh, in your book, uh, uh, some uh, hand built models uh, uh, by Kawai as、uh, seen.、Uh, mm-hmm. um, I have to go back and look at the books、right. again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, beautiful models.、Mm. Uh, Tetsudo Mokeshi also had very good,、uh, very high skilled uh, craftsman. Uh, name, uh, his name is、uh, Mr. Take.、Uh, he was also very good uh, skilled. Uh, uh, Typical of his work、uh, is、uh, Great Northern uh, uh, L1 2662,、mm-hmm. um, uh, both、uh, MB Austin and、uh, PFM.、Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's、uh, Mr.、Uh, Takes one man work、uh, from frame to、uh, tender.、Uh, He could do、uh, by himself only.、Um, and uh, uh, the work is very neat and uh, very uh, stiff. Um, uh, that's also uh, uh, typical, uh, totally handmade、mm. uh, in Japanese brass history. Matsumoto san, we would like to thank you so much thank you. for sharing this information with、mm. us. It was an honor、mm. to speak you with、will. you. You are. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you.、Mm. And thank you, Fred, too. <laughs> Happy to do it. We appreciate sharing <clears throat> this information、uh, because, as we mentioned, unfortunately, we've lost many of these、uh, very skilled builders. I think we could call them artisans. Oh, they definitely and were. And to hear their stories、mm. is so important to keep that as a、mm. part of history. And combine that with the model. We appreciate the model, we appreciate the prototype,、mm. but when we think about that individual that put their、mm. heart and soul、mm. into creating it, I think it'll、mm. help those of us that are fortunate enough to have some of those pieces be even more appreciative of that. Well, I just want to add to that this gentleman truly was an innovator for the brass model industry.、Mm. I mean, without things that he did, knowing these people, We wouldn't have a lot of the product that we have today. Yeah, we thank you for that、yeah. because this, this is a hobby. <clears throat> Without those innovators,、yeah. it would not be what it is、yeah. today. And there's probably just, you know, more than a handful, but not a tremendous、yeah. amount of people that change the course of what we have. And yeah. so, yeah, we do want to. I、uh, acknowledge that.、Mm. So, on behalf of our viewership, <laughs> we thank you because thank you. many of us enjoy a product that would not be the same today without you. Uh, it is、uh, very funny or strange.、Uh, our culture, I, th- I believe、uh, this is not only hobby but culture.、Mm. Uh, so, uh, we uh, Japanese, uh, Korean, and the、uh, United States people, and uh, uh, even the European uh, people uh, could make、uh, one culture together. Of course, we want to take a few minutes and talk about some of these little gems before us. This is some of our older brass, right? Correct. And you wanted to highlight. Uh, what we can do with some of these older pieces that we have. Because really, it's, it's kind of like in a sweet spot. You have your brass that's it's very cheap,、um, you know, the lower end of the, of the spectrum, we might say. But then you have your very expensive brass, you know,、right. uh, $2,000, $1,500 and more. But now you've got a, a sweet spot, you know, somewhere between maybe six, eight hundred dollars around there, or even maybe just a little bit cheaper. Correct. That you can do some enhancements to that really make them、uh, just valuable pieces. So tell us a little bit about what we have here. I think this is one of the most exciting parts of the brass collectible and, uh, and uh, purchasing world right、mm-hmm. now. And as you alluded to, yes, there's lower end brass pieces in the hundred, hundred fifty, two hundred dollar range. And then, of course, the collectible ones where you probably wouldn't even want to touch them, just put them on the, right, put right. them in the shelf behind glass. <laughs> And, and enjoy them and even watch them appreciate. But there's this, as you said, sweet spot to where you have 
brass that unpainted in like that three four hundred dollar range or beautifully custom painted or even professionally yeah. painted or in the case of the k5 they're factory painted mm -hmm. where you're more in that four hundred to six hundred dollar range and those models can be taken, they usually have can motors, very nice gearboxes, and all the modern electronics can be added to them pretty cost effectively. As we know, the brass hybrids out there are selling, they're making more of them, and on top of that, some of those are actually appreciating in value, some of the older runs. And the price point of them is, you know, it's in that six, $700 range, and they're sellouts every yeah. time they announce. Well, taking a look at the models here in front of us, this is a beautiful Class K2 Norfolk and Western. Mm -hmm. And as you know, the brass and the, or I should say, let me back up that, the die cast and plastic world in Norfolk and Western, you can get a, a Y6, you can get an A class, you can get, of course, the J Streamline 484. But if you want to go for more of the K1, the K2, or the M2, or even the Pacifics, chances of those being made in die cast or plastic are pretty right, slim right. to none. However, in brass, they are available and quite affordable. You know, don't get me wrong, we're still into hundreds of dollars here, but looking at the brass um, that is coming out in the hybrid, they're still in that range, that sweet spot. So looking at this model here, retails for about $395 unpainted. Mm -hmm. And this is a beautiful paint job. It's been laid on it by Matt Callahan. He's mm -hmm. done over 160 pieces for me over decades. <laughs> Does mm -hmm. a beautiful, beautiful job. He even DCC'd and sounded it, lit it, mar uh, put the marker jewels in and such. And all that work was done for around $400. So nice. for under $800, I've got a little bit more than a brass hybrid to cost, but now I've got a really unique piece on my layout that can run and this everybody is the can motor and gearbox that came with that mo that model wow. so it didn't even have to be modified in any way that way and she's a beautiful runner wow and Matt's, and Matt did a nice job with this so so what you're saying is we can take some of these within that that sweet spot that range and by the way uh, with these models we go back to an era where they were producing you know, quite nice size runs at this mm -hmm. time. So they're easy to find. Yes, they're not, um, you don't have to wait, you know, six months or a year to, right, for one right. to pop up. Usually, um, you know, whether it be through, of course, dealers uh, like yourself, uh, which of course I highly recommend because you've already tested the models and anything, but you know, there's other sources like eBay and sure. such too. And usually one of these will pop up every month or two. And again, in that $395 price range, give or take a little bit, especially if it's been painted and such. And then, of course, the money you've put into the model, um, there we can argue the point of how much did it appreciate the model now. Right, right. And I have seen these CB&Q Hudson's, about a $600 model out there, go for over $900 yes, yes. with the DCC and sound added. So it's worth so, it. It's it worth can it. definitely be worth Absolutely. it, yes. Absolutely. Wow. So just, <laughs> yeah, just a beautiful money, uh, running model here. So that's, that's our K2. So tell us a little bit about the Hudson here. Sure. This is another model that uh, Matt uh, Callahan did for me. He uh, painted it. In this case, he weathered it. Yeah. I, I see the weathering, to, yeah. Yeah, I wanted it to be slightly weathered. Mm -hmm. Again, with the sound system in, the lights put in, um, marker jewels put in for the classification lights and such. Did a great job, and uh, we'll have it running here in just a moment so people can yeah. see that one. And uh, that was also an unpainted sunset model. And again, a model you can pick up in that four to $600 range, depending on uh, the condition of it. And the other interesting thing about that model is when Sunset did it, they mm -hmm. put every version in that you could possibly want. So the oil bunkers there, if you wanted the oil burning version, mm. the roller bearing rods are there, if you wanted the roller version. I, I like the spoke pilot wheels, so I sure. left them in, but they have the solid pilots too. So yeah. you can literally build three different Hudsons from that one model if you would like. That's Very a, nice. It's a great model and a great runner, too. Yeah, looks good, too. And he did a nice job on the weathering, you know. Like you say, just lightly weathered on there. So, And by the way, we're going to have uh, Matt's information coming across the screen. So in case our viewer, I mean, does an excellent job with the painting, with the weathering. Uh, he does DCC and sound. He, he also does repair. He does repairs and right. upgrades as well. So if it needs a gearbox or if it needs a motor or if it has been damaged in shipment or if it's been dropped or anything right. like that. I know I had a model come in. It was a Gem Ruby Redding T1, a $1,500 uh, yeah. model. Was not packed correctly, uh. severely damaged. Uh, the cab had been uh, bent down. The front pilot snapped off. There were a trailing truck broken off. The tender bunker, uh, coal bunker, had been crushed down. Mm. It was a mess. I sent it to him. He did all the brass repair work, painted it, and it came out beautifully. Nice. So can definitely do that work yeah. as well. Well, so, so Matt, we got his information up on the screen. He says, go ahead and call him or email him. Yep. And uh, we'll, we'll, if you want to get uh, anything done to any of your models, and we know our audience is always asking about that. You yes. know, they're calling us all the time. Who can paint my models? Who can do repair? 
And this would be a good source for that then too. And, and you've got one more name you wanted to mention that does that. Most definitely. We have a beautiful K5 Pacific yeah, here. Factory painted, right? Factory yeah, painted, factory K5. Painted. Yeah. yeah, Key Imports uh, did that model. Beautiful model mm -hmm. there. And Jan Willard, who does uh, virtually all the work for Howard Zane sure. with regards to DCC sound repairs. Because as Howard uh, will say in the video, sometimes his pussycats knock over a, a train 600 <laughs> scale feet to the, the ground. Yeah, blame it on the cat. <laughs> and, I, and Jan has done some math for work rebuilding some things or repairing some things. Uh -huh. Now, uh, Jan does not do uh, paint work per se, uh, yeah. but he does DCC sound upgrades and of course repairs if a model's been damaged or doesn't work. Sure. And uh, he actually has lit marker lights, which we're gonna see on that K5. And it's actually in the video as well that I've produced of that model running with uh, the uh, firebox flicker, the cab lights added, oh, and beautiful. the marker lights yeah. light up as well. So literally all the electronics that you have in today's newer die cast and plastic models can definitely be added to these brass models. And again, very cost effectively. Uh, that model there, that K5, I have just a little over $800 in it with everything done and added to it. Give him a call if you want some of these little extras installed here. And uh, that's just a wonderful way to, to go ahead and enhance your models. And this will be the theme of Brass Expo 2019 yeah. is cost effective brass with all the technology added to it. Yeah. And there'll be dozens of these types of models there from a variety of railroads available for sale at the show. Wow, excellent. Hey, tell us a little bit about, you know, we know that you've done the videography uh, with your production company uh, over at Howard Zane. Yes. Now, you, we were talking earlier offset about some older models which he, you know, hasn't run in a long time. What does that tell us about brass? Tell us a little bit about that. Well, boy, we, if you've ever been to Howard's, he has many, many brass models yes, there on he does. shelves and everything else. <laughs> And of course, the theme of the video was the Erie Railroad going over to the New York Central, uh, interchanging with the Big Four in New York Central and heading down and interchanging with the LN and and also the CNO. So those are the four main railroads and locomotives we have. But for the interview segments, uh, one of the things I always liked about the Allen Keller series is he would cut away to the railroad and things running. And I thought, why not have some different models running from Howard's mm -hmm. collection? So you'll see a Denver and Rio Grande Western Challenger. You'll uh. see a Chicago and Northwestern Burke. You'll see all sorts of things running and some he hadn't had out in over 10 years. And I'll be honest, viewers, this model here, this Norfolk and Western, yeah. I hadn't run it in over five years. That's what you said years. when you came here. Yeah, mm -hmm. I hadn't even you know, tested it, hadn't even oiled it, and here's how beautifully it runs. And all of his models, I said, ran great. Um, I know the Allegheny that was up there, I don't think had been running over a decade. And we just put it on the track and she Isn't ran nice? beautifully. Yeah, wow. now we recommend you you put a little oil on, just like you would any model, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, the uh, models ran great, just like these ones running here today. And um, as I said, we ran over 80 different trains there at Howard's. That and uh, sometimes we had to clean some track because some yeah. track hadn't been used in a year or two. Yeah. But <laughs> and that's the beauty of brass, unlike me, it's never too old to run. Correct. Get it? <laughs> <You're right. laughs> yeah. I'm not too old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but your brass yeah. isn't. And it's such a great value, you know, when you invest in these pieces. Uh, and that's the beauty is even if you had them stored away for a while, you can just bring those things out and run them. And Howard's a great example uh, of that. I've been there. I've seen him on his layout. Many, many models on that layout, but boy, it's just great to be able to just pick them up and, and run them. And enjoy them, just, yeah. like, just like we're doing here. And in some cases, adding value to that mid-level yeah. uh, mid uh, pieces, those mid-level pieces of brass. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we yep. certainly uh, appreciate that. Uh, let's put a couple of these others on the track here. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and, and put our Hudson on here. Oh, most and definitely. See, and see, let's see her run, okay? Oh, already. <laughs> So of course we're able to put our S4 Hudson here on the track and uh, what she too is running nice. Very she, good job. She is uh, original gearbox, original cam motor, just uh, the lights added, directional lighting and DCC sound of course. Interesting thing about this model here is when Sunset created it, you can actually do three different variations of this with all the parts mm. they have in the box. If you want the oil bunker instead of the coal bunker, if you Change want it out. Yes. roller bearing rods, if you want the solid pilot wheels as opposed to the spoke. If you want the spoke center driver as opposed to the box box, 
all the parts are there in that brass model. So a, an incredible value, actually. Hats off to Sunset for that yeah. one. And again, a beautiful runner, over 20 years old and still, as you hear, chuffing down the track yeah, very nice. nicely. So you got it, it originally came unpainted. Unpainted. Uh, unpainted, mm -hmm. and so you sent it over to Matt, I believe you said on this one, right? Yes. So he did the painting and the, and the weathering on that. He did some subtle weathering on. I wanted it just subtly weathered. He can do heavy yeah. weathering, whatever you'd like. I just wanted right. it subtly weathered. Like it had a little bit of use on it, but still kept a nice shape for the passenger service it does. <laughs> Very good. So just another example of what you can do with some of this uh, uh, older, perhaps, brass that you can pick up and unpaint it like this, and you can recondition it, paint it, weather it, add the DCC and sound, uh, all of the lighting effects. Just a beautiful model. Yeah, and still in that you know, $700, $750 yeah. price range with everything yeah. done professionally. If you can do it yourself, take another $100 or $150 off the right, price. Right, right. Good but point. This, Good but point. all this work was done by a third party, in this case, Matt Callahan. And again, you can see how cost effective it is comparing to the models out today. Sure. Good point. Okay. Well, next we're going to take a look at our K5, all right, from oh. Key. All right. All right. <laughs> So we have our key K5 here. Mm -hmm. Now this one's a little bit different. As we mentioned, this is factory painted. Correct. So all the factory paint, the decals, everything else on there. But what have you added to this model to make it enhanced? Mm -hmm. Now a gentleman named Jim Willard does all the repairs, upgrades, and mm -hmm. technical electronic work for Howard Zane. And this is a model he did for me. It's a Key Import K5. Mm -hmm. And again, great cam motor, great gearbox. Didn't have to do anything. A beautiful running model. What was done was, of course, the DCC sound and then all the lighting yeah, that you I see. see that. You have, yep, yeah, front marker lights, yeah. rear tender yeah. marker mm -hmm. lights. There is a cab light inside the cab to light the cab up. And a firebox Love flicker the light. Flicker. Yep, firebox yeah. flicker as well. Looks good. Yep, so with today's electronics yeah. and what can be purchased today, you can see these models can really be uh, beautifully lit up with all the, the quote bells and whistles. Sure. Because they're in there as well with the sound, yeah. of course. And again, this is another one of those models in the, around that completely professionally done, around that $800 mm -hmm. or under mark, mm -hmm. uh, and what is possible today yeah. with that mid to high mid level brass. Sure. Sure, and, and we know that they're great running models to begin with. Yes. They're great looking, so you've got a great start at a reasonable price. You just add all these other enhancements, and wow, look at this. It's just fantastic piece. They are fantastic, and everybody, depending on what you can uh, you know, purchase a model for, I know I just bought a beautiful Frisco 482 Mountain from you, beautifully painted, either a beautiful customer or professional job. Mm -hmm. Only paid $395 yeah. for it. It's going to get the works like this. This was about $300, so for under $700, I'm going to have a Frisco 482 Mountain, a 4400 yeah. series, looking and running just like that. Again, I think a very cost-effective uh, way to add these unique pieces that you'll probably I never see in brass or die cast to your collection and to your operating layout. Yeah. Well, Forrest, we've learned a lot. We certainly appreciate you taking some time to help us focus in on this sweet spot, so to speak, an area in which we can certainly uh, get a lot of value for our buck. I, I believe so, and that's going to be the theme for Brass Expo 2019. There'll be something there for everybody, the new person coming in with uh, some uh, seminars, of course, we'll have, as well as the high-end collector uh, with the, the very rare pieces as well. But uh, the, the big focus that you'll see is, again, this what I consider to be cost-effective and relatively affordable brass with all the high-tech items added to it. I'm Boyd Reyes, and you're watching Monday Morning Express. We have a special guest with us today, James Wright. Hey, Thanks Dan. for coming to visit, James. Nice visiting you. Thanks many for our, having me. Well, you're welcome. And many of our viewers probably are already familiar with you because uh, you have become very popular on YouTube. I believe you have about 40,000 viewers now, right? Subscribers to your YouTube channel. Yep, that's correct, Dan. Congratulations. So tell us where to find you. So it's uh, youtube.com forward slash JLWII2000. I didn't really plan that out. Uh, <laughs> the, my channel just kind of became on its own, uh, but it was just a user ID that uh, took off. Great. So tell us what you do on your channel. So I do a, a variety of product reviews, and I started how-tos at the very beginning along with product reviews because there weren't a lot out there. And then there are train show visits and visits to places like this. We're filming here, visiting you, and visiting uh, other manufacturers as well. 
Yeah, I've caught a few. You went to some uh, big train shows, and you got to go up to Rapido. That was a great episode you shot like a year and a half ago. Yep. Uh, we are fortunate enough to get to travel with this too, with this show. It's a lot of fun meeting different people, isn't it? Yeah, I have a blast uh, just learning all about the hobby and all the people behind it. Yeah, it, there's some very interesting and uh, uh, people we can learn a lot from in, in this industry for sure. Yep. So now I know you're also a personal collector of brass. Tell, uh, tell our viewers what you like to collect. So I personally started uh, when I began my YouTube channel on the hunt for Union Pacific passenger cars. And as most people know, there aren't any theater cars or a really accurate business car made in plastic, which got me on the track of brass and found a few brass pieces there. And then uh, that has expanded now as the bug bit and I've got uh, over half of the Union Pacific passenger fleet. Now I'm still working on some, I was looking for some over there in your warehouse today. And uh, also I have some freight locomotives uh, such as the Olympic torch units that also pulled passenger consists and other Union Pacific locomotives like SD70Ms and SD70ACEs. So you collect a lot of Overland brass primarily? Yeah, primarily Overland. There are a few fringe pieces in there, but mostly sure. Overland models. Well, you got good taste. That's good stuff. Yeah, and a little tidbit, my, uh, my hometown is only 20 minutes away from Muncie, Indiana, where Overland models was based. There you go. Yeah. Well, that was an important place for brass. Ironically, most of brass uh, kind of came out of California, yeah. but Overland kind of bucked the trend there, and yeah. uh, they were a prolific producer of some great pieces. Yeah, they definitely uh, set the bar high. Yeah. Well, hey, James, thanks so much for coming to visit. All right. Um, I'm sure our viewers will look forward to checking out some of your reviews. I appreciate uh, what you've done for the hobby, because really, uh, although it's, it's kind of become a business for you, yeah. it's also very important to let people know what's coming out, what's available, and that is going to keep the industry going. And a video format is really what people want to see these days. Yep, pretty much. It's, uh, it's very important to get the information out there. And uh, although not really profitable that much, I do have a blast. <laughs> That's right. That's the main thing. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and I noticed I have a mug. You don't. We'll fix that. Okay. You've been on the show now. We'll get you your Monday Morning Express mug. Thanks again for stopping by. All right, thank you. Let's do for the, the bedroom. Okay. Uh, let me get some thicker pieces of plastic here. And so for bedrooms. Oh yeah, too. Some of these windows on passenger cars, above the, window, uh, above the bedroom windows, you had the upper bunk. Upper, they provided oh, yeah, yeah, little pieces, yeah, little, little windows above yeah. the upper bunk. So those usually have to be covered up too, you know? Okay. Some railroads didn't have anything up there. It was just clear glass, so the provide the only shades were down on the bottom. So now for those, would you cut its own piece, or would you just make your initial one just a little thicker? I just make my initial one just a little okay. bit thicker. Yeah, coming in there with a little bit wider. Yeah, yeah. Because like from one end of the cart, this is the distance from here to here mm -hmm. is a lot less than here to here. So right, that upper right. section, just try to lay in one, one piece time, of plastic. Right? Yeah to cover up that whole area. Okay. And then, um, yeah. All right, very good. I wish I had a heavyweight car to show you, but it's pretty much heavy, from heavyweight mm -hmm. to lightweight, the window treatments are the same. Um, some cars, the interiors, you're not able to lay one solid piece because there's obstructions. Mm -hmm. Some of the, the importers had tabs. So when you lay the glass in there, you would bend down these little tabs to grab a hold of the glass. A lot of precision scale cars are that way. Um, so you're gonna have to cut thin strips, fold down the brass tabs to hold it in place, right, right. and go that route. Okay. Um, sometimes I just choose to go in there with a the Dremel and then just cut all the tabs off. You know, and then that makes way, it a little easier. Yeah, before yeah. I before I start painting, I always just make sure that what's in my what's on what's on the way. You know, mm -hmm. when you're gonna lay that glass later on. So inspect the car, rub your fingers in there. Sometimes when you do strip a car, there might be leftover uh, paint or leftover glue from the previous glass that was in there. You got to take it all out. Mm -hmm. Think about the final thing when you're you're about to lay glass for the rub your fingers in there, and you might find chunks of plastic or glue. And so how can we get that glue out? I would say use? use an X-Acto blade. Okay. Yeah, flat blade, X-Acto blade, and just use it Scrape in a chisel motion. Okay. Yeah, just go through. 
um, a lot of that after that aircraft paint remover. Right. Should get rid of a lot of that stuff. But okay. every once in a while, you'll catch something in there. Sure. And, and what about our, win our bedrooms then? So, for lounge cars, lounge cars, mm hmm. Let me put, a, put one of these to simulate a window. Yeah. The, the blinds. Man, the blinds. Right. So blinds this is plain really old products? Plain old products. Guys, right. you guys, guys got to jump on these. Order these things up. Um, these are really neat. I. So the blinds come in different mm -hmm. sizes. They're very tiny ones. I guess for little smaller bedroom windows or bathrooms, they use that. There's usually bedroom windows right here in the middle section. Mm -hmm. And then big lounges for diners. Okay. okay. Uh, business cars use this stuff quite a bit. You know, with with the, with the blind material, sometimes you could spray it silver. I mean, it's stainless, but if you have a stainless steel car and you want to put blinds in there, paint them silver. So that way there's a contrast. Yeah, a little offset. You know, you're mm -hmm. not looking at everything all stainless steel. So spray them silver or spray them whatever color the railroad wanted their blinds. I, I've seen orange blinds, I've seen yellow blinds, gold blinds, you know, just, you're gonna have to look at the books and okay. see what colors that they used for their blinds back in the day. So with these blinds, you could just cut it with a pair of um, And save the rest of it, whatever steel. you're not using, yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. With stainless steel uh, scissors, mm -hmm. you can sit there and cut out your sections and then come in from behind, let me just, Kind of hard to. Mm -hmm. hard so behind to that, it, yeah, behind, behind the styrene. Let's yeah. see if we can capture that. That looks so good. You can see yeah, how yeah. it looks. It's yeah. just really cool when you're having these. Yeah, I those like little these blinds. details are just phenomenal. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so blinds are for lounges and diners. I, you know, I would check out your reference books. You know, every just to make every sure. railroad out there, or most of these ra had reference books, mm -hmm. and for their societies or historical societies, offer this information. And so, okay. yeah, because there's nothing worse than putting. Uh, some railroads were very strict. They used nothing but shades because they didn't want people. Shades were, you know, they're a lot cheaper, you know, versus blinds. Blinds are. You know, the top way to go, but a lot of those blinds rattled inside right. the car, you know, so okay. they would go with shades. Um, another thing, too, for for heavyweight cars, we use, I use my, my own decals. I printed up my own decals with, in conjunction with Microscale, yeah. and I made the prism glass mm -hmm. for heavyweight cars, um, for the little tiny bathrooms, right. or for the ends, so the prism glass feature those are so these were custom done you you, you gave them these right yes, and you yeah, had them printed on yeah another example of micro scale and how individuals can do that right yep exactly Very but uh, i did all the artwork on this thing so yeah it was and plus table settings right for for passenger cars there's so many things that come alive inside sure. the car you got table settings you got bath bathroom interiors bedroom interiors lounges especially when stuff, you go light so. those cars up on the inside you can see all the table settings and everything they exactly. look it looks great yeah i mean uh, sorry i can't print up the food on the plates yeah. but at least it's the table <laughs> settings i got a bunch of table settings and doorways so when you're looking down the aisleway of a car on my cars, you'll see doors oh, in the inside. For okay. all the hall, down the hallway, you'll see all the interior doors, the outlines of them. Very so nice. I got different colors. I got black, silver. I'm coming out with a few other colors for bedroom interiors. Um, I hope to have these out soon. But this is something that kind of exclusive that I've been working on for my models um, to bring out the interiors of the cars. Sure. Way too many times. I mean, I look at a person's collection and. There's no life. I mean, a beautiful yeah. train on the outside, but you're looking in, it's like. So what? you can really dress these things up oh, with, yeah. with our window treatments and some of the little things we can do on tables, mm -hmm. make them look really good. Yeah, even some of the new models yeah. are coming out. I mean, all the the shade heights are pretty much at the same. You can yeah. go there and just tear that stuff out and stagger mm -hmm. them, put right. in your own shades and your, you know, because this stuff, it is costly. And so for some of the importers, just to cut the cost, it, they're not custom models. They're just the factory finish that yeah. everything comes in pretty uniform. So boy, that's great and all with rectangular 
you know, type uh, passenger cars, uh, lounges and everything. Those are easy installs. Well, maybe not easy, but they look good. Yeah. But something that I've had a question on is what about dome cars? You know, the glass inside of a dome car is definitely a different shape. And it's not like you're going to install it the same as a, as a lounge car. So I'll tell you what. Maybe next time when we come back, we can see about installing dome cars. How about that? Sounds good. Well, as promised, we have a very special model coming to you today from the BrassTrains.com vault. This model also happens to have a great story behind it. And very few brass models have ever personally brought me so much pain and anguish. If you happen to read our Brass Train guidebook on the chapter on the second worst sound in the world, well, you'll know what I'm talking about. Because that day where we were high in a skyscraper in the middle of Manhattan and placing these expensive and heavy models back precariously on their shelves, uh, this is the model that had an accident. That tender somehow rolled off of a conference table and was damaged. But alas, we were able to get it fixed uh, so the story ends well. Gary Coe, so kindly, was able to get us a brand new, perfect tender shell, which we were able to replace uh, this with. It was a real challenge at the time because the owner, while he was very kind, was insistent that we repair this model. And I simply couldn't find another one. In fact, to this day, this is the only streamlined uh, fine art model New York Central Hudson that we have had through our shop in the 20 years. So it shows you how rare and desirable this model is. In addition to uh, being prominently featured in our Brass Train Guidebook and displayed at the Brass Expo, this model even has had screen time on Law and Order. Yes, there was an evil baron of energy uh, and they used this office of, to film and sure enough, you could catch a few scenes where you could see this model in the background. So, well, I've enjoyed having this model in our collection. Uh, when we had the opportunity to buy it back from the original owner along with the rest of his collection, which was extremely extensive, by the way, uh, it still brings me a little twinge of pain every time I walk by and have to look at it. So it seems like a nice opportunity to let somebody else enjoy it and kind of have the bragging rights of owning it and being able to recount the story as some come to your home to view it. So it will be available immediately following this episode of Monday Morning Express on BrassTrains.com. Thanks for all the good work mm -hmm. so far, but you told us you were going to tell us a little bit more about your videography. So I grew up loving the Alan Keller series too. How did you go about like kind of paying homage to him, but yet improving it with today's technology. Well, yes, there's no doubt uh, he created a great series of videos there over many years. And one of the things that I wanted to do was build upon that uh, by telling, number one, a great story. Uh, and to do that, we actually extended the length of these. These videos are going to be in the 100 to 120 minute mark. Howard Zanes is two hours, in fact, a few a minutes full over. Feature wow. a full feature <laughs> film, yes. And the storyline itself is almost 54 minutes. So we wanted a great storyline there. Then the other thing we wanted to do with today's technology is get the viewer right into the scene. So literally, you're almost trackside, whether it's a panning shot or a pacing shot or sometimes a run by in virtually every segment that you see the trains operate. And then we wanted to make it sound as good as it looks. Howard Zane did a phenomenal job job with his literally 3D art that he's created in his basement. And we wanted to make those sound effects really stand out. And I want to let the viewers know we used decoders and speakers and also sound files uh, from ESU Loke Sound. So you can make your railroad sound as great as this one uh, with boom arm mics over the speakers is how we recorded it all. So that way when you see a train pull out, you hear the slack action from some real recordings I've taken or the chuff rotations are all synchronized mm -hmm. correctly. Or if you see an RS-11 diesel, you'll hear the 251 prime mover. So that was the other area where we really expanded upon the experience for the user in these videos. And I do hope everybody does enjoy them. Nice, and to give our users just a little feel for how much work went into this, how, not counting your editing time, which I'm sure was massive, how many days did you spend with Howard? I was at Howard's for 22 days shooting. Wow. 22, 22 days. Wow. Some days were 15 hours of shooting. <laughs> and you came out of that with a lot of stories, but when, oh, yes. when is an itsy bitsy spider not so itsy bitsy <laughs> on the screen? What happened there? When you're on about the fifth take of a shoot to get all the timing right of the yeah. trains, everything looks beautiful. You shut down for the night, then you watch it the next morning just to, to see how good your work is, and you see a spider come right down in the middle oh, of your feet. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> which looks like 
like a monster oh, in that yeah. scale layout. <laughs> yeah. So you had to reshoot again. I had to reshoot that one again, and uh, just some of the fun stories in there, but Howard and his wonderful wife Sandy are be wonderful ambassadors to this hobby and art form, and we thank I thank them very much personally. And uh, as I said, it's a lot of funny side stories, and in his interview, I think everybody will get a good chuckle out of some of the things he has to say. <laughs> Sounds like it's great, and this is gonna be released to the public. It is, yes. Uh, it'll be uh, on sale here uh, within the next two weeks. Really nice. uh, Through uh, dealers, which I know you Including talked about us. becoming mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. so you can mm -hmm. buy them right here on BrassTrains.com. All right. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Very nice. Well, you know, I'm glad we don't have any spiders yeah. coming down here. I don't want so. to have to reshoot this. Because <laughs> it was a perfect take. It was yeah. a perfect, after five times, yeah, it was yeah. a perfect take. Yeah. Well, that's great for us, and we certainly look forward to seeing that. So, well, it's been a, a nice episode so yes, far, but you know what? Season 10, uh, not season 10, episode, episode 10. 10, the season finale, I should say. It's coming up next week, so here's what you can expect to see on the show. Next week is our final episode of the season for Monday Morning Express, and you can expect lots of great surprises, guest appearances, and a few special announcements. A very special set of items will be released from the BrassTrains.com vault. Brass model train art at its finest. Boyd Reyes gets his revenge on Dan and Roland for all the work they made him do during his visit to BrassTrains.com last year. You may enjoy seeing it almost as much as Boyd did. I appreciated your explanation of that video, but you were kind enough to bring us an excerpt of it, correct? That is correct, several clips. So we'll sit back and let the viewers enjoy and watch. That sounds perfect. Thanks for joining us and enjoy some of this amazing footage, compliments of uh, Forest Mace. Known as Wyoming's on the Lehigh Valley, the class used one of the most powerful trailing truck boosters ever fitted to a locomotive. A Delaware, Lackawanna and Western 482 Mountain, number 1405. 105 built in 1924 is seen. New RS-11s head out with a freight assignment. Although sporting an Alesco feed water heater, a Wooten firebox, and a massive tender, her basic specifications were derived from the USRA heavy Mikado. chase to a class R3, a USRA design 2102. The CNO had 60 Alleghenies, each developing 7,500 horsepower and weighing almost 1.2 million pounds. Lima built them all. The most western point of our journey, where we see Louisville and Nashville 284, a big Emma as they were called, passing by.